To ensure the normal operations of a switch, it is essential to keep the switch usage of the switch, uh, uh, to keep the CPU usage of the switch in a normal range. A high CPU usage can cause huge impact on the entire network. Uh, so this course describes the common strategies and methods for troubleshooting the high CPU usage issue in S-series switch. Uh, first, let's see the diagnostic tool. We can use display CPU usage to check the CPU usage of the device. Uh, here, this is the idle task, and these are the task description. Then we can use display CPU defend statistics. These are these are all the packets that should be sent to the CPU, and how many packets has been passed, how many packets has been dropped will be showed here. So to deal with the high CPU issue caused by packet flooding, we can use this statistics collection function to view the protocol types. So in this case, we can see ARP request. There are too many, and the pass and and dropped packets, dropped packets are very high. It means there are a lot of ARP requests sent to CPU. So the CPU usage will be up uh, very high. Then, display lock buffer. When uh, a high CPU usage, it will generate alarms and logs. You can view records in the lock buffer and search for CPU usage high log to find out the tasks whose CPU usages range top three. So in this case, here we can see the top three is FTS, SMPG, and the BCM RX. Okay, next is the high CPU usage caused by packets flooding. These are the roadmap. First, uh, we should check the high CPU usage. Then verify the top tasks. Then we should determine the packet type which caused uh, the high CPU usage. Then handle the issue based on protocol types. Handle the issue based on other situations. Okay, and uh, when the protocol protocol packets flood, the BCM RX, FTS, and the SORC tasks may have high CPU usages. BCM RX is a packet reception task triggered when hardware in the switch interrupts. It sends receive packets immediately to the FTS task on software layer. The FTS task distributes and processes the packets. When layer 3 packets are sent, the SOC task often consumes high CPU resources. Okay, so this is an example of troubleshooting. This forge, uh, the, the switch, generates the CPU usage high alarm. So this alarm, when we connect the switch to our uh, e-site, the network management server, we can also receive this alarm. Then first, we should check the CPU usage and the tax, tasks whose CPU usages rank the top three. So in this list, the alarm information occurs, the CPU usages of BCM, RX, and FTS tasks rank top. So these two facts, facts show that the CPU usage increases because too many protocol packets are sent to the CPU. Then uh, we should determine the packet type. Use display CPU defense statistics. So here, 
we can see uh, this CPU high usage is caused by a large number of ARP request packets. Then we should uh, handle the CPU usage issue based on protocol types. Now in this list, we have a lot of per, uh, packet types. So we will face, uh, we will solve them one by one. First, if it's because of ARP, then uh, we can run the display interface command to check which interfaces have abnormal amounts of broadcast packets. Then configure broadcast suppression on those interfaces to limit the rate of broadcast packets on each interface. So for instance, uh, limiting the rate of broadcast per interface to 50 packets per second. If it's caused by DHCP, we should check uh, whether the DHCP service needs to be enabled. If not, we should disable it. We can use undo DHCP enable command globally. If DHCP is needed, uh, you are advertised, uh, you are advised to enable the DHCP error down function on downstream interfaces. So use this two command. DHCP snooping check DHCP rate enable and DHCP snooping check DHCP rate trigger error down. So uh, when there is an error, uh, when there the DHCP rate is too high, it will trigger the interface to be shut down. Next is TCP ARP miss. So this issue is caused by scanning non-existent IP addresses on a directly connected network segment. When data packets are sent to unavailable IP addresses, the data is actually sent to the CPU, which triggers ARP learning. At this time, you are, adv you are advised to adjust the delay time of ARP learning on each VLAN interface. For example, on this VLAN interface, ARP fake expire time 30, or uh, TTL expired. If you don't need the local IP address to be displayed in trusted results, we can discard the TTL expired packets because the trusted command the trusted function is based on TTL expired packets. So we should, uh, we should define a CPU defense policy and deny the packet type TTL expired. Then apply this policy. So when we use this function, uh, our device will not allow it uh, to be trusted. Next. Reserved multicast. So these packets are usually routing protocol protocol packets with the destination address 224.0.0.x. So if this type of package is not required on the local device, we should discard this packet. For example, if the switch is not running OSPF or not running other routing protocols, we should discard this this kind of packet. Next are some IPv6 packets. If IPv6 is not required on the local device, we should discard all of the IPv6 packets. So define a CPU defense policy and deny all the IPv6 packets. Then apply it. OSPF. Uh, if it's caused by OSPF, we should check whether the device maintains too many routine entries or excessive OSPF peers. 
optimi optimize the routes as required to reduce routine entries or OSPF peers. Mm. SNMP. If it's caused by SNMP, we should check whether there are frequent NMS operations such as interface traffic information collection. You are advised to reduce the frequency of an MS to obtain the switch information. Okay, uh, the third is collection of high CPU usage information. If we want to uh, collect this information and give it to Huawei, we can collect it, uh, log files in this log file directory. So for fixed switches without CF cards, uh, collect the log file by running this display log buffer and display trap buffer. And uh, we can use display diagnostic information to collect the diagnostic information. And to collect the CPU defense statistics, we can use the display CPU defense statistics all. And uh, it is suggested to run this following command, to run this command several times within 10 minutes. Okay, that is how we uh, collect the information. So this slide is.